Hey everybody, welcome back. So in the first two videos, we've created the progress bar. Then we've simplified the layout for the progress bar in the second video. And in this third video, we're going to actually add JavaScript animations to the progress bar to make it transition smoother between percentages. Let's go. Okay, here we are in our project. This is the progress simpler component that we created in the last video of the series. And this is what our progress bar looks like now. It's moving from left to right, but it's not animating. It's just jumping from one value to the next. Let's animate that movement using JavaScript. So this main set interval loop is going to give us simulated updates every one second. The reason I want to clear that up is because we're going to have another loop that actually does the animation. I'm going to go down here outside of our class. In fact, this can probably just be in another file, but I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to create an animate function. We're going to call this function every time that we want to animate an update from the current value to the next value, or I should say from the previous value to the current value. In our ng on init method, let's create a new temporary storage called percent current. This is going to be our current percentage value. And then each time we get a simulated update, we're going to temporarily store that previous percent in old percent. So here, instead of updating the percent that we're going to bind to, we're just going to update the percent current in our loop. So we can use our utility function that we've created in the first video of the series, the get new percent value function to calculate a new percentage. And here is where we're going to call our new animate function. We'll come back to this. Everything else stays the same. We're going to drop out of the loop as soon as the percentage is equal to or more than 100. So let's go to this animate function. We're going to have some parameters here. The first parameter, I'm going to call this uh, oh, let's call it the easing function, right? Because all beautiful animations should use an easing function. And uh, really, what does an easing function signature look like? It's going to take a number and it's going to convert it to some other number. That's all it does. So let's say we have a percentage jumping from 50% to 75%. We want this easing function to give us that 25% gap on a scale of 0 to 1. I know it sounds a little bit confusing right now, but you'll see how this works later. So our animate function will know how to use the easing function to make that transition, maybe not linear, but uh, ease in or ease out a little bit of a swing to the animation. The next parameter we want to accept is the step. So for every single animation frame, we want to execute this step function that we're going to pass in. And the signature of the step function looks like this. It's going to take in a delta, do something with it, and then return void. What's our step function going to do? Well, our step function needs to somehow, based on the delta that we passed in, somehow update the percentage value that our UI is bound to. We'll see this in a minute. And finally, every animation step needs to take place over a certain period of time. So we're going to pass in a duration, which is going to be a number. And that's the number of milliseconds for this animation to take place. And the way we create an animation in JavaScript is by using the set interval function. Remember when I told you in the last video that set interval is going to be different here? Don't get this confused with this set interval, which just simulates getting new percentage values. This set interval is the interval that we want to run for each update. So for each update of the percentage, we're going to run an animation, and that's going to be this function. And we're going to execute this every 10 milliseconds. We also don't want to keep this running. So we're going to have an ID here for our interval. And when it gets to a certain point, we want to clear the interval passing in that ID, right? We don't want a forever executing uh, loop here. I'm going to go ahead and save this and Prettier is going to format it for me. So when we first start this function, we want to get a start time. So let's save off a start time, which is going to be new date. Then we're going to kick off our interval. And the first thing we need to calculate is the amount of time that passed between the start time and this iteration of the animation loop. So there's time passed. We're going to get the date at this very moment. And then we're going to subtract the value of the starting time when we started this whole animation. So that's going to be the time that passed. And now we're going to calculate our progress. By the way, this is not the progress that we're showing to the user. This is not the percentage value of that progress bar. 
This is the progress where we are in the animation between two points in the percentage of the progress bar. Oh, that's confusing. Sorry about that. But <laughs> keep in mind that this progress right here is the progress of that particular animation. Okay? So this progress is time passed divided by the total duration of the animation. So how far along are we in this animation, in this iteration of the loop? This is going to be a number between 0 and 1. And if progress happens to be more than 1 after we calculate it, then let's just force it back to be 1. Okay, so I made this a constant. You can't change it when it's a constant. So let's use the let keyword here. Now we need to apply the easing function to our progress. I'm going to call the result of that delta. So I'm going to call the easing function and pass in the updated progress into that function. And that's going to give me the delta. So progress is going to be between 0 and 1. And if we didn't use an easing function, it would just be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1. Okay? That's linear. That's linear time. Notice that between each number that I said, there was the same amount of time that passed. But if we're using a different easing function, for example, ease out, then it would be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Okay? So this easing function is going to convert our progress. It's still going to result in a number from 0 to 1, but at different times, it's going to have different amounts of time between each delta. And then we're going to execute our step, which is going to set our percentage for the progress bar, and we're going to pass in that delta. Finally, we don't want to just clear the interval, because this will clear the interval the first time around. So we only want to clear the interval if progress equals 1. That means that we've reached the end of our animation, and we can clear the interval. So there's our animate function. All right, now we need to call the animate function with some things that make sense. The first thing that we're going to use is an easing function. Well, we're going to add some easings later on using D3. But for now, this is a function that takes a number and returns a number. We can take in T and return T. And this will be the equivalent of a linear animation. So we'll see how it is in linear, and then we'll update it later. The next parameter is a function that's our step function. It takes in delta, which is a number. And we're going to do something with that delta. We need to set the percentage. And finally, we need to pass in the duration. This duration is the duration of the animation. So you want to keep it relatively short. And you definitely want it to be shorter than one second that we're using for this outer loop. So I'm going to just go with a value of 300 milliseconds here. All right, so what goes into this step function right here? We want to calculate the new width based on the old percentage and the new percentage. So for every single step in this animation, we want to take the old value, we want to take the new value, and then based on this delta that's coming in, which is a number between 0 and 1, we want to calculate the new width of where that percentage bar should be displayed. At this point, we've already gone through the easing in our animate function, and we're going to get a number back that's going to factor into where this animation bar will be drawn. So I'm going to create a new function here. I'm just going to paste it in. This function is called amount from to, and it's going to take a range that has this shape. It has a from and a to, and it's going to return a new function based on delta that calculates this distance between the first percentage and the next percentage. So here we're subtracting from, from 2. So in case of 75 and 50, we're going to have 25 here. We're going to multiply that by t, which could be anywhere between 0 and 1. And we're going to add that to from so that we're not starting from 0, so that we're only adding additional percentage values to the previous percentage. I know that's a lot of words. It's going to be easier when you see this. So our new width is going to use this amount from to function. And we need to pass in an object that has from and two from is going to be the old percent that we've saved off. And two is going to be the percent current that we've saved off. And finally, we want to go ahead and pass in that delta into this function. Okay, when we get the new width, this is where we're going to update our percent with the new width. Remember, in the previous videos, we've seen that our percent is bound directly to the width of that stack layout. I'm going to save this. And let's take a look. Okay, 
Now we have animation between every point. How can we make this better? Well, right now we're just using a linear approach to our easing function. What if we use some kind of uh, real easing function? We can write an easing function. It's just a matter of taking one number and converting it to another between zero and one. Or we can use a library. And I wanna go ahead and use D3 easing function library. So let's go to package.json. And this is already available on NPM. You can use a library called eases, or you can use this one called D3 ease. Okay, we're gonna get version 1.0.3. And this also comes with typings. So let's go get some types for D3 ease. Now we just need to install that NPM package. So I'm gonna go out to my terminal here and run NPM I. Now we got that package and we can go up here to the top of our component. I'm gonna go ahead and import everything as D3 from D3 ease. All right, now let's go down here to animate. And instead of this linear function that I used, I'm gonna use D3 and all these different choices that we have now to animate our progress bar. Let's try this uh, bounce in. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, you know what? I've updated my NPM packages, so I should probably go ahead and rerun my app too. And there it is. There's our progress bar. It's animating and it's actually bouncing a little bit. Well, I don't really like that too much. There's too much bouncing going on. So I'm gonna use this one called ease quad out. I like this one a little bit better. Let's take a look. That's nice, I like that. So this is plain old JavaScript animation. What else can we do here? Well, there's a couple other things we can do. One of them is RxJS. RxJS is very common to use in an Angular application, but you can also use it in a regular NativeScript core application if you want, or, or any other JavaScript application. Most likely in an Angular application, you're going to be receiving your data for the progress updates from some service. So you're already gonna be using RxJS. And we're just gonna plug into that and use RxJS for our animations too. And we'll do that in the next video. If you like these tutorial videos, make sure you subscribe here for more NativeScript and JavaScript related content. And you can follow me on Twitter, I'm at Digitalix. Come back in the next video where we'll take a look at more animations for this progress bar using RxJS.